So I want to show you the most important stitch. This is the key stitch that you need to know to make wounds heal nicely and to get the best scars. Uh, if you don't get this right, then you can't um, get it to heal nicely. And what you do on the surface is with much less importance than the buried dermal stitch. So here I've got a pre-cut wound and I've got a pre-stitched wound with the buried dermal sutures, showing basically what you're trying to achieve, which is little bumps where the skin edge, the cut edge is kind of pushed up, um, what we call everted. And that's because the, the skin is pulled together from here and from here. So you get these little dimples either side uh, and that is taking the tension off this bit, the cut bit where the scar is going to form. So if you get that pulled together from just a little bit back from the cut edge, then that's going to, going to leave this nice and loose so that you can close it easily and do just fine levelling on the surface with uh, uh, just normal sutures or glue or whatever. Um, and then there's no tension on the actual sort of cut part of the wound as it heals um, over the next couple of months, um, which is going to prevent a hypertrophic and a pulled stretch scar. Um, and how long it takes, uh, it depends on the suture material that you're using underneath, but basically you need to take that pressure off the top for a while. So how do you place those stitches and what do you use? You're going to use something like this, which is uh, a typical absorbable suture. Uh, this one happens to be a braided vicral, just what I've got uh, to hand. Um, and this is going to last, who knows, a few weeks, a um, couple of months, who knows. And there's a difference between how long the suture material lasts and how long it's actually holding it strong. But anyway, so we open up the packet. There's a packet within a packet, as with everything. And then it should, the needle's nicely presented with the thread, ready for us to grip with our needle holder, needle driver. Grab it like that. Uh, remember that we're grabbing these about a third or so along the... Um, needle uh, curvature there so that we're not grabbing the bit where the thread inserts otherwise that's going to uncrimp it and the thread's going to fall off eventually so grab it on that flat surface there and uh, sticking out um, uh, from the needle holder like this if you're right-handed um, and then we're going to use either the skin hook or the um, uh, or the forceps to um, uh, approach the cut wound and we'll start in the middle because typically that's what you do and then you'd add other ones um, and what we're going to try and do is we're going to do this buried stitch so it's going to be basically it's going to be underneath the skin so when you're trying to remember how to place it remember the knot at the end is going to be you want it as deep as possible so that it absorbs nicely and doesn't come out through the wound so that means you're going to start deep and finish deep okay um, now there's various ways of doing it now the way it's usually taught in this vertical fashion um, is that you uh, sort of put it into the subcutaneous tissue there. You come back a little bit from the skin edge and you can tell you can see a little dimple, but you don't want to push it so far that you see the steel. Just see a little dimple like that. And then you're gonna to have to bring it back on itself. Okay, so you've caught the dermis and then you come back under either through the dermis or just in the subcutaneous fat you're going to grip it again the skin hook or the forceps not gripping the uh, sharp tip and you're going to remount it pull the thread through a while um, and then you're going to place it in identical position on the other side so you've got to go into match so i'll come out in the fat here so i'm going to lift it a little bit go just into the subcutaneous fat and i'm going to go in horizontally sort of parallel to the skin surface then i'm going to tip it up a little bit until i see a little mound but no steel and I'm going to grip that dermis and then I'm going to turn it back on itself out into the deeper fat where I first went in. And this is obviously skin substitute, so I don't know how well it's going to work. We're going to pull it through and then we're going to tie a knot as normal. So our normal surgeon's knot, two, and we'll see our hands cross in this instance. Okay, then we'll keep that uh, needle driver in the sort of U of the thread there. We're going to grab and take another might just tighten it a bit first, because it's gone a bit looser. Grab it like that, pull it through anyway, and finish off as normal. 
Okay, so we've got a pretty reasonable result there. Probably would be a bit better in a human. We're going to snip that off flush to the skin. So if you've done it correctly, then that knot should be quite deep. You can see it there. Should be well below the surface of the skin. So you're safe to chop this off at the surface. So I always ask the assistant just to put the scissors on the skin surface, snip it there. It might be slightly poking up there, but it should normally spring back quite nice and deep. Now there we've got a reasonable result. The wound's sort of together. There's a little bit of a gap. We haven't got nice dimples. Now I should experiment a bit with that. I think it's pulled through the skin substitute a bit. But basically that's how you, you place those. But what I tend to do is, is, is just to modify it a bit. So the pulling, you can see there, like getting that angle to get a really nice dimple was quite hard and it's pulling through and that can happen in the human. So instead of doing that, you can just go in halfway between that one and the end here. Pop it in the subcutaneous fat get that dimple again. Now instead of trying to come back on ourselves like this, um, although we can aid that by sort of folding the skin over instead of trying to pull this back, the easiest way by far is we've got that dimple, is then to sort of turn it a little bit and kind of come slightly horizontal like that. And that just makes it an awful lot easier to get that out. And we'll come out in the dermis there. I'd like to be in the just subcutis a bit. Um, and that just stops you from bending the needle and it will eventually snap and whatnot. So then grab it like that. I'll pull it through again. And then we're going to match that the other side. So it's just very slightly to the side of where we came in. So we're going to go into that subcutaneous fat, get that dimple and just turn it slightly. Get a nice grab of the dermis there and then come out just along a little bit. Okay, now I don't want to grab that tip. So pull it through. Okay, and let's try tying the knot again. I'm going to pull it nice and tight. And we can see here we're getting a much better dimple. You see that? See that pulling together like that. Now, I'm not going to go into techniques for making this tighter, but we can do that in another video. But there we are. If I pull that nice, you can see the dimples there. We've got a much better dimple there because it was a bit easier to handle the suture. And although this isn't real skin, it does happen like that in real skin quite often. We can give it a little, little tease there just to get that where we want it. And sometimes you find the edges are just not quite aligned. And you can just use either the tip of the forceps like a skin hook or you can like use the skin hook and just sort of just ping it up a little bit and that will just release it and get it in a nicer position. And you can see there we've just got much nicer dimples. Um, I'm going to lift that up so you can see the nice dimples there. And that's really what you want. But you need to tell the patient also that that's expected and that's what's what you want. You want the, the edge to be pushed up and have those dimples and it'd be all lumpy because otherwise they think this is terrible. You tell them that that's temporary and that's deliberate and it will go away as the suture material um, absorbs and then it um, all flattens out nicely. So that's a much easier way and a much better result. You could actually take that even further. So if we go halfway on the other side here and make it a really nice, actually just a horizontal. So not just turn a little bit, but really a proper horizontal uh, version of that. So we'll go in the subcutis here and we'll get that little bit of dermis and we'll go right along a bit, but not too far that you're going to have to bend the needle or you can't find the needle. Go only about half of the curvature of the needle, otherwise it becomes difficult. Grab it again, and then we're gonna, you can see how the difference there between the entry and exit is a bit more. Nice bit of dermis. Let's get that out there, sorry about the shadows. All right, and then we're gonna tie the normal surgeon's knot to grip it nice and you can see how it's really pushing up when I tie it like that. Now it's slipping, various ways of tightening it. I've shown you one briefly there, but not explained it. We can just turn it like this, lock it in position. That's another way. And then we can do second throw and third throw, bed them down nicely. Where's the assistant when you want one? Um, okay, and then you'll just snip that off flush again pop down nicely. So you can see there we've got a lovely E version really pushed up 
wound edges, uh, really nice dimpling. And we've actually closed a wider area, so you can often get away with putting fewer of these buried stitches in. So you basically repeat that until all the wound is closed because you don't want the surface sutures to be doing any of the work. You don't want them to be doing any closure, only fine alignment of the height um, and maybe just tiny bits of just sort of apposition. But you're not closing the wound with the surface sutures. That means there's no tension on the surface sutures, which means you're not going to get the stitch marks and all the problems. Um, now, of course, you can finish with a subcuticular running stitch underneath the surface as well, or something on top, or glue. Or, to be honest, this is so well levelled and, and together, and there's no tension on it, you could actually just tape it, and it will probably do really well. Um, so that is the most important technique to master, and if you master that, you will get great results most of the time, and everything else is a bonus. Thanks very much.